morning family and welcome to Oasis Church Johannesburg. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. May you join us in our praise and our worship. Comment in the comment section. We would love to hear from you. But for now, please enjoy the praise and worship. Amen. Amen. You are my strength. Strength, strength like no other. 
I have decided that I will exalt you. Bless the Lord of my soul, I will exalt you. Everything that's within me, because you are my God. Because, because you're with me.
you Lord for who you are for what you are doing in our lives indeed you are good and your mercy is forever we've seen your goodness yes. Yes. we've seen your unconditional love yes. we've seen father god you walking before us yes. making a way where there was no way we have seen we've seen your love yes. you are good and your mercy is forever you are good and your mercy is forever. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Speak to us this morning. Speak to our situations this morning. Yes. Speak to those who are sick this morning and heal them in the name of Jesus. Do that which only you can do in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 I greet you, saints, in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I trust that you are well and that God is keeping you safe at home with your loved ones. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank God for keeping us safe. Amen. Even during this time. I greet you. Bazalwane, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo. Ah, thank you so much, uh, Siba and Gile, for the worship. May God richly bless you for that. We continue with our sermon series entitled Following Jesus. How many of us are enjoying that sermon series? <laughs> Following Jesus. Following Jesus. Today I want us to look at the topic about belonging, believing, becoming, and behaving concept. I want us to look at belonging, believing, becoming, and behaving concept. Because of time, we will only deal with belonging and believing today. Then next week, we'll continue with becoming and behaving like Christ. Amen. Amen. And the subtitle for this message this morning is, If Only You Knew. Can you say that after me? If only you knew. If only you knew. The saying, if only you knew, suggests that you do not know something, but if you knew you would act differently. It suggests that there is something that you do not know, and if you knew, you would act differently. Amen. Amen. So we'll unpack that, that topic as we go on with the message. Amen. Amen. As I said, we are talking about belonging and believing. Sense of lack of belonging causes severe problems in life. Sense of lack of belonging causes severe problems in life. This is because we cannot separate the importance of a sense of belonging from our physical and mental health. It is because we cannot separate the importance of a sense of belonging from our physical and mental health. And as I was preparing, I, I came across these findings online. I quote, as I was preparing and I was doing research for this sermon, I came across the number of findings online. I am quoting. Studies find that a sense of belonging is associated with numerous beneficial outcomes. A sense of belonging is associated with numerous beneficial outcomes, whereas a sense of not belonging increases the risk for psychological and physical dysfunction. Lack of sense of belonging causes lower self-esteem, negative worldview, distrustfulness, and perception of rejection. Depression, anxiety, and suicide are common mental health illness associated with lacking a sense of belonging. Depression, anxiety, and suicide are common mental health, health illness associated with lacking a sense of belonging. I end quote. Amen. 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 A sense of lack of belonging is painful. A sense of lack of belonging is painful. A sense of lack of belonging can lead to social behaviors that interfere with individuals' ability to connect to others, creating a cycle of events that further weakens a sense of belonging. A need to belong refers to our desire to feel accepted by other people. 
a need to belong refers to our desire to feel accepted by other people. Amen. Amen. Are we still together, Bazalwan? Yes. As an example, let me tell you my story. I was born out of wedlock. My mother was not married to my father, and as a result, I did not know who my father was. My mother left me with her relatives when I was less than a year old. This created a lot of belong belongingness issues for me at a very young age. Where I grew up, they made a point to let me know that I did not belong there. They made a point to make me see that I was a liability. That ngingumlanjwana, if we was umlanjwana ngisizulu. I was made to work for a meal at a very young age. It was a no, a no work, no eat situation. This affected my perception of life. It affected my self-esteem. It affected my intellectual capacity. It created a lot of visible gaps in my life. It caused a painful lack of belonging. Painful lack of belonging issues for me, such as inferiority complex. I grew up, Bazalwane, with an unrealistic feeling of inadequacy. I used to think that there was something wrong with me. There was something wrong with me. Amen. When I became a teenager, I started searching for my father because I wanted to solve my belongingness issues. This search for my father was driven by the need to belong. Gingo wakabar. Ubanu babawam. While I was still searching, I had an encounter that turned my life around. One day I was at church, and on my way out, I still remember, it was at Anglican Church in Gandla. On my way out, Mfundisi called me, a pastor in that church. And when he called me, he said to me, Ndodan, he gave me a hug. And said to me, That changed my life. I did not hear him as he was saying that, but I had God himself saying that through, through him. I had God himself saying that through him. I had God himself saying to me, I love you. And that turned my life around. It was the first time in my life I stopped looking for my biological father who decided to abandon me and embrace God's love for me. From there, I began to know that I belong. I began to know that I belong. And I belong to a father who will never leave me. A father who will never forsake me. A father who loves me unconditionally. I belong to a father who has accepted me. I belong to a father who goes out of his way to look for me. And not the other way around. So when I say if only you knew that God loves you. If only you knew. If only I knew about God's love, I would have not wasted time looking for my biological father who chose to leave me. I would have, I would not have behaved the way I used to act as a result of my belongingness issues. I would not have had a lower self-esteem issues. I would not have had lower self-esteem issues in my life. I would not have had an inferiority, inferiority complex if I knew about God's love early enough. I would not have cried for a father I did not know. So to everyone listening to me right now, if only you knew the love of God for you. If only you knew the love of God for you. If only you knew that you belong to God. If only you knew that God goes out of his way to look out for you. If only you knew that God would never abandon you. 
If only you knew how much God has done to demonstrate his love for you. If only you knew how much God loves you. Knowing the fact that God loves you will move you into action. It will transform your life completely. Knowing that, knowing that, settling that in your heart, that I am loved by God. Woo! The creator of heaven and the earth. I am loved by God. 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 Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, 17, 18, Amplified, I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation that gives you a deep and personal and intimate insight into the true knowledge of him. For we, woo, woo, for we know the Father through the Son. And I pray that the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your heart, woo, the very center and core of your being may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit, so that you will know, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, God's people. Amen. Woo. May the eyes of your heart be enlightened. There are three things we need to, in order to understand the power of God's love. According to this scripture, there are three things we need in order to understand the power of God's love. Number one, we need prayer. We need wisdom and we need revelation. Prayer, wisdom and revelation give us a deep, personal and intimate insight into the proper knowledge of God. Wisdom, revelation gives us in-depth, personal and intimate knowledge about God's love for us. Amen. Without prayer, wisdom, and revelation, God's love will remain far-fetched, he has said. Without prayer, wisdom, and revelation, God's love will remain far-fetched, he has said. Without wisdom, revelation, prayer, you cannot understand the power of God's love. Say amen. amen. Paul also says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 16 to verse 19, Amplified Version. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self, indwelling your innermost being and personally so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. And may you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded, Securely grounded in love. Be fully capable. Woo, be fully capable of comprehending with all saints, God's people, the width, the length, the height, the depth of his love. Fully experiencing that amazing endless love. And that you may come to know practically through personal experience. The love of Christ, which far surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God, so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled and flooded with God. Completely filled. And flooded with God. Completely filled and flooded with God. You experience the fullness of God. Ujesu atole ikaya in Sisweniako. Is your yako ibe in Dawayak, ibe physical address yak. Ibe in Dawayak, you. 
the power and the qualities of the love of God. God's love has transformative power. Wherever God's love is, there is a radical transformation. Wherever his love is, there is a radical transformation. God's love is multifaceted and multidimensional. It is wide, it is long, it is high, it is deep. In other words, there are no limits and there are no conditions to God's love. God's love is not end, Bazalwan. It is a gift. Ha <laughs> ha, you do not work for it. But God freely gives it to you. God's love is an expression of his eternal nature. Woo! It is not a reaction to our current behavior. Woo! Woo! It is not, God's love is not a reaction to our current actions. In other words, we do not have to perform in order to earn it. We do not have to do anything in order to earn it. It is a gift. It is a gift. It is his eternal nature. He loves us because of who he is. Not because of who we are. He loves us based on who he is. Not on who we are. He loves us unconditionally. The love of God is unfailing, which means it is inexhaustible. It is unchanging. It is unwavering. It is ever-present. It is utterly dependable. You can fully depend. You can fully rely on his love for your life. I say, we thank you, Lord. And so we need to settle it in our hearts that God loves us. We need to settle it in our hearts that God loves us. We need to grasp, we need to comprehend, we need to understand that God loves us. We need to know and experience the multifaceted and multidimensional love of God towards us. We need to understand God's love in order to experience God's presence in our lives. In other words, God uses his love to fill us with himself. <laughs> he uses his love to fill us with himself. He uses his love to make us what he wants us to be. Thank you, Lord. So the question is not if God loves you or not. But the question is, do you know that God loves you? Think about that. The question is not if God loves me. But the question is, do you know that God loves you? Do you know that God loves you? Do you believe that God loves you? And do you know what it means to be loved by God? Ooh. Do, you, do you understand what it means to be loved by God? Do you comprehend what it means to be loved by God? Do you grasp? Do you feel? Do you know that God loves you? Amen. Amen. The reason why it is so vital for you to get an intimate knowledge of God's love for you is that, and I want us to pay attention to this, unless you know and believe that God loves you, it will be difficult to believe that whatever you ask, God will give it to you. Unless you have settled it in your heart that you are loved by God, it will be hard for you to pray with confidence and boldness, knowing that God will do that which you are praying for. Amen. In other words, a lack of understanding and comprehension of God's love affects your prayer life. In other words, you can only, you can only come boldly before the throne of his grace when you know that you are loved by him. You, you can only come boldly before him when you know, when you comprehend, when you understand that he loves me. And God loves you. So in other words, your lack of a deeper understanding of God's love creates limiting thoughts. It creates limiting beliefs for you. When you struggle to believe and embrace the fact that God loves you, you will struggle to react or to receive anything from him. 
When you struggle to believe, when you find it difficult to believe that God loves you, it will be difficult for you to receive anything from him. In other words, your level of understanding of God's love will determine how much you believe him and how much you receive from him. Your level of understanding, your level of, of comprehending that God loves you will determine how much you believe him and how much you receive from him. Your understanding of God's love is the foundation upon which God will deliver whatever that you trust him to do in your life. It is the foundation upon which God will perform whatever that you are praying for. Yes, Woo. So when I say, if only you knew the love of God for you, I'm not talking about your intellectual knowledge. Hmm. I'm not talking about your intellectual knowledge only. The transformative power of God's love is not in the intellectual knowledge, but it is in what I call working knowledge. So the transformative power of God's love is in the working knowledge. There is a difference between intellectual knowledge and working knowledge. Intellectual knowledge is where you know enough to talk about the concept. But working knowledge is where you know enough to apply the concept. It is where you know enough to use your knowledge to get the intended results. So most people get stuck in talking about the concept of God's love. Did you hear that? You can talk about it, but talking about it does not change your life. Most people get stuck in talking about the concept of God's love and never move into applying the concept and therefore not getting desired results. The results are obtained at a working level of knowledge, not just at an intellectual level of knowledge. Yes, sir. Most people know John 3.16 intellectually. I repeat, most people know John 3 verse 16 intellectually. But few have working knowledge of the same verse. Amen. And lives are transformed at a working level of knowledge of that verse. John 3, 16, Amplified Bible. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes and trusts in him as savior shall not perish but have eternal life. Think about that verse. Read it again and again. And pray that God reveals to you what is the meaning of this verse. God's love for you moved him to action. God's love for you moved him to action. And so, your understanding, your comprehension of his love should move you to action. So, many people know this verse, as I said, by heart. But very few have understood it well enough to apply it and get the results promised by God in this verse. The results are obtained, as I said earlier on, at a working level of knowledge, not just at an intellectual level. The promise is, is that people who believe will not perish but have eternal life. Pay attention to that. People who believe will not perish but have eternal life. The right understanding of this verse should move you into action. And the action required is stated in the same verse. Did you say that? Amen. The action required is stated in the same verse. The required action is to believe. Simple as that. Amen. Simple as that. Believe. And then believing releases the promise. Yes. Yes. Your intellectual knowledge of this verse will not stop you from perishing. So in other words, you can perish with your intellectual knowledge. But your working knowledge of this verse 
will move you into believing, which will then prevent you from perishing. Did I make sense? So intellectual level of knowledge is phase one. But move to the working level of knowledge. Say amen. amen. Example, whenever there is a disconnect between what is happening in our lives and what the word of God says, whenever there is a disconnect between what is happening in our lives and what the word of God says, we have to go back to our knowledge of the word. We need to get to the level where we know the word of God enough to apply it to get the intended results. Say amen. amen. So your ability to quote the word of God will not give you the intended results. But believing and applying it will give you the results. Being able to talk about the love of God is not going to change your life. But believing in the love of God will change your life radically. Amen. Allowing the transformative power of the love of God to move you into action will change your life. And the necessary action is to believe. It is to believe. Amen. Amen. Example. Let us read the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 45 in the King James Version. Luke chapter 1 verse 45 in the King James Version. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. I read again. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were taught her from the Lord. Uh, uh, let us read this verse slowly. And blessed is she or he that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were taught her from the Lord. Woo! So, blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of what the word of God says. Woo, woo, woo. Do you hear that? Amen. Do you hear that? Amen. Blessed is she or he that believe, woo, for there shall be a performance of what the word of God says. So, 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 when there is no performance of what the word says, you need to check, do you believe the word of God? So, without believing, there shall be no performance of what God said. So, 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 the action required here is to what, Bazalwan? Is to believe. Without believing, there shall be no result. This verse means divinely empowered is she that believes or oh, let, let me generalize it divinely empowered is the one who believes divinely equipped is the one who believes divinely enabled is the one who believes in other words god act on behalf of the one who believes Woo! Woo! God exceeds the expectations of the one who believes. For the person who believes, God does more than what they ask. He does more than what they imagine. He does more than what they dream. He does more than what they pray for. He exceeds their expectations. He exceeds their expectations. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, 21 Amplified Bible. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, our greatest hopes, our greatest dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. 
to him be the glory in the church and in Christ throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, Bazalwane, God made a lot of promises to you in his word. But unless you believe, there will be no platform upon which God can perform those promises. Another good verse to see this is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, Amplified Bible. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, Amplified. By faith, even Sarah herself received. By faith, even Sarah herself received the ability to conceive a child. Even when she was long past the normal age for it. Because she considered him who had given her the promise to be reliable and true to his word. Amen. Do you hear that? Amen. By faith, even Sarah herself received the ability to conceive a child. Even when she was long past the normal age for it. Because, why, why, why? Because she considered him who had given her the promise to be reliable and true to his word. The God who loves you is reliable. He is dependable. He is true to his word. Amen. So the power of God's love is so much that it changes your life completely. So in other words, the evidence of the fact that you comprehend the evidence, the proof of the fact that you understand that you are loved by God should be seen in a life that is changed. Or a changed life is proof that you understand that God loves you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 2 verse 4, Amplified. Romans chapter 2 verse 4, Amplified. Or do you have no regard for the wealth of his kindness and tolerance and patience in withholding his wrath? Are you actually unaware or ignorant of the fact that God's kindness leads you to repentance? That is to change your inner self, to change your old ways of thinking, to seek his purpose for your life. Are you unaware or ignorant of the fact that God's love leads you to repentance? That is to change your inner self, your old ways of thinking, and seek his purpose for your life. God's love leads us to a complete transformation. It leads us to a radical change of life. It leads us to see life through his eyes. It leads us to see ourselves through his eyes. It leads us to see other people through his eyes. God's love leads us to a complete change of mind. It makes you think like him, speak like him, act like him. Understanding and embracing God's love will change every aspect of your life. Every aspect of your life. Every aspect of your life. It will change every aspect of your life. It will change your attitude. It will improve your intellectual capacity. It will enhance your self-esteem. It will grow your confidence. It will change your behavior and your character. Embracing God's love will change the direction and the quality of your life. Embracing God's love will change the quality and the direction of your life. Embrace his love for you. The power of is in the knowing. Can you say that after me? The power is in the knowing. The power is in the knowing. God loves me and I know it. 
Nothing, 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 nothing. No one can talk me out of his love. God loves me and I know it. Can you say that? God loves me and I know it. God loves me and I know it. Now that you know that God loves you, you can believe in him wholeheartedly. When you fully comprehend that he loves, when you fully understand, when you grasp that he loves you, you can now believe in him wholeheartedly. You can believe everything he says about you. <laughs> you can believe absolutely everything he says about you. Why? Because you know that he loves you. Amen. Knowing God's love removes all limiting beliefs. Knowing that you are loved by God, it removes all limiting beliefs. So, when God says to you, you are more than a conqueror, believe that. Yes. Believe that. And act like someone who knows that they are more than a conqueror. So, when God says to you, you can do all things, believe that. Yes. And refuse to believe any opinion suggesting that you are inadequate. When God says, you are the head and not the tail, believe that. Amen. You are above and not beneath, believe that. That's who you are. When God says, you are unique and special, believe that. Amen. Believe that. Amen. And refuse to compare yourself with other people. When God says, you are strong, believe that. And reject any opinion suggesting that you are weak. When God says you have dominion over everything he created, believe that. Amen. Believe that. And live life like you know that you have dominion. Believe that. Believe that. God made you in his image and likeness. Believe that. Believe that. Amen. Amen. As I close... There is something powerful God says about you in Isaiah 61 verse 3. God says about you, you are the display of his splendor. He says, you are the display of his splendor. Believe that with all your heart and refuse to embarrass God by looking down on yourself. Looking down on yourself is an embarrassment to God. He says you are the display of his splendor. Yes. Believe that with all your heart. Amen. Isaiah 61 verse 3, New International Version. And provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. A garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called. Say, I will be called. I will be called. Oaks, of Oaks of righteousness. A planting of the Lord. Of the Lord. For, the For the display of his splendor. Say after me, I am the display of God's splendor. I am the display of God's splendor. Just before we close, I want us to understand this word. The word splendor means great beauty that attracts admiration and attention. Yes. Yes. That's who you are. Yes. Great beauty that attracts admiration and attention. It means a quality that outshines the usual. Yes. Woo! The quality that outshines the usual. Amen. That's who you are. The other words for the word splendor are glorious, gorgeousness, magnificent, nobility, superbness. All these words are defining who you are in God's point of view. That's who you are. You are the display of God's splendor. You are the display of God's splendor. You are his representative. You are his likeness and his image. Yes. 
you are the display of God's splendor. Unkulunkulu bugi sanga. Hey, unkulunkulu bugi sanga. Ut pegani ena. And see what masen tanda tanda lanja. May the Lord bless you. In your coming in and your going out. May God continue to reveal to you how much He loves you. May you be secured and settle it in your heart that you are loved by God. May you be grounded and rooted in the knowledge that you are loved by God. May you get to a level of grasping, understanding, comprehending that God loves you unconditionally. Understand the multifaceted, the multidimensional love of God for you. He loves you. He loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Yes, 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 yes. God loves you. God loves you. No matter who you are, God loves you. No matter where you are, God loves you. No matter umule ganjani zono, God loves you. Do you know that even if you don't love him, he loves you. God loves you. May you experience his love. May you move from a level of intellectual knowledge to a level of working knowledge. May you see this knowledge work in your life and produce desired results. God loves you. God loves you. May this knowledge change your life. May this knowledge move you into action. God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. His love is intended to change your life. God loves you. God loves you. Nothing you will ever do that can separate you from the love of God. God loves you. Sitana Nayikas. Allow the love of God to transform your life. God loves you. You are the display of His splendor. May God bless you in your coming in and your going out. May He walk before you and level all the hills before you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Bazalwani. Have a great week ahead and uh, enjoy your week. It is my prayer for all of you that may you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. If you are working, may you see, may you experience the goodness of the Lord at work. Yes. Even if you're working at home, but may you experience the goodness of the Lord at work. Yes. If you are still studying at school, may you experience the goodness of the Lord at school. If you're running your own business, may you experience the goodness of the Lord in your business you, yes in your business wherever you are and whatever you do may you see the goodness of the lord enjoy your week amen, amen.